the call to worship in a time of violence and despair an ancient prophet gives good news the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light the boots of earth-shaking armies on the march the soldiers cloaks rolled in blood are destined to be burnt food for the fire for a child has been born to us wide will be the dominion and boundless the peace with justice and righteousness from now on forevermore christ comes to us not as a conquering hero but as a child whose faithful peaceful life will follow god's way of love in dark days may the love of christ shine brightly at the center of our lives spreading warmth and light in us in this congregation and everywhere lighting the christ candle tonight we light the four candles of advent waiting we light one for the people who waited for hundreds of years for god's messiah we light one for mary and joseph waiting for jesus to be born we light one for all the waiting we have done, getting ready for this night. We light one for all the people who are still waiting tonight for God's love and justice and peace. But tonight, we can finally light the Christ candle. Jesus is born. The Messiah has come. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Let us pray. Give us, O oh God, such love and wonder that with the shepherds and magi and pilgrims unknown, we may come to adore the Holy Child, the promised King, and with our gifts worship him, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We would make room for you, this night of all nights, dear God, room in our homes and in our hearts, room also in our life together. Let your word be born in us anew, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, your splendor shines in and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading this evening comes to us in the form of Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone upon them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. We set apart this night for worship, and we light our vigil lights and sing our songs of reverence, of joy, and of hope because of what we believe happened this night and what became of this new and vulnerable life. The light of the world was kindled against the darkness. The life of God entered this world as flesh and took up residence with, entered into the struggles of, and took sides beside ordinary people. The warm and generous love of God's people then and now in receiving him demonstrates through hospitality the way, the truth, and the life of God for the healing of our world. Many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the poem, One Solitary Life, written by a Baptist pastor in 1926. It's actually an excerpt of a sermon that he preached and it begins, he was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. And at the end of the poem, it concludes that 19 centuries have come and gone, but no one has affected the life of humankind as powerfully as this one solitary life. Well, the poem itself is really dated and it's uncomplicated and it's filled with tropes of triumphalist Western civilization, too many to really be fruitful anymore. But I found a similar appreciation recently in a book I was reading by the poet Reynolds Price called A Serious Way of Wondering. It's a book on the ethics and life of Jesus. And he begins with a similar appreciation for the historical importance of the life of Jesus. The claim that Jesus of Nazareth is the most influential man or woman in history is hardly debatable, he writes, nor is the fact that he remains a figure of startling vitality throughout the world. Startling because the available facts make the reality all but incredible. No other human being before Muhammad, who was born in about AD 570, endures with any significant fraction of the personal force that Jesus continues to exert. And then he adds parenthetically, the Buddha's teachings continue their power in many lives, but the facts of his life and his person seem of lesser force for his followers. But then the genius of Reynolds Price is instead of giving us an uncomplicated appreciation of Jesus' historical importance, he weighs the ambiguous history or what we have made of it. Jesus' acts and his teachings, he writes, have generated among those who've called themselves followers deeds of an otherwise unimaginable selflessness and creative genius, as well as pulverizing evil. Price goes on to name some of the evils that have been perpetrated in Jesus' name and by Jesus' followers, helping us to truly appreciate not only the influence, but the power of our response. And it's an honest reckoning with our history. But there's, a, there's the question to ponder. What has been Jesus' influence on us, on me, on my habits, my heart, and my hopes, on my convictions, my sense of community, my conscience, and my way of caring for others? Jesus lived so that he can live in us. His birth was but a beginning. I've been thinking a lot about 
historical importance and influence during the season of Advent, uh, much of it generated from a news story that I heard on NPR about uh, the history of steam heating. The decisive influence on the current way we heat our homes with steam uh, happened in 1918 during the Spanish influenza, during the uh, great world pandemic of the time. It begins after the Civil War when the leading idea for contagion was that the cause of contagion was bad air or fouled air. And so there was a movement to create uh, more open and wider building structures and space. And in the early 1900s, uh, the idea was to leave windows open um, as often as possible. In 1909, New York City passed legislation that all living quarters had to have an outdoor facing window. But the real decisive influence was the pandemic of 1918 that killed 50 million people worldwide and 675,000 in the United States. The question was, how do you leave windows open and heat a home? The idea was to find a way to heat a home uh, on the coldest day of the year with all of the windows open, which today sounds insane, but that's where our, our steam heating system has come from. Before the pandemic, steam heat was located in the center of the house. But in all the construction that began after the end of that pandemic in 1920, placed radiators under those open windows so that the building could be heated on the coldest day of the year with the windows wide open. Now, you can see this in our own church house, which was conceived in 1920, erected in 1922, and dedicated in 1923. All the steam heaters are right under the window to serve that goal. That pandemic from nearly 100 years ago left it lasting influence uh, that affects us right down to the plumber we had out last week to work on heating issues in the church. It's in the design of that space that we share. And no doubt, since so many homes in White Plains were built in the 1920s, in the homes that some of you are in right now. Makes me wonder about the long-term changes that will take place in our lives and the way we live as a result of this pandemic. But it makes me wonder now about the Christ story and Jesus' influence on our lives. What revisions have we made in our lives? What redesigns have we made in our lives? Uh, what changes are still evident in our lives? Because we have known him and he knows us. There's one thing that is true and it never changes. The God who is shown to us in the child born this night this God has loved us and loves us still and will love us always. And this God and this child welcome our love and our life and our all. Merry Christmas. Holy God, this Christmas we set our eyes on the small flickering flame of hope who became the light of the world. Guide us by your light. Guide us in your path to live these days with joy and steadfast love for you and for our neighbors. Like the wise ones, may we go the distance to honor and protect the tiny, vulnerable sparks of joy born into this world. Like the shepherds, may we move quickly to where the light of justice awaits our presence, our willingness to stand together and witness, no matter the risk. Like Mary and Joseph, may we nurture God's liberating light, feeding, clothing, and tenderly loving the movement for freedom. Loving God into the presence of your healing light, we bring the joys and sorrows of your people. We pray and we ask for the peace of all the nations of the earth, especially for countries where violence is a daily reality. For the comfort of those who are sick or dying, 
for all those who mourn. For all who are lonely in this season marked by separation. For justice and mercy for people made poor by our national and global economy. For all who lack food, shelter, work, or access to health care. For all who are taxed to the point of desperation. We pray for the imprisoned and detained and all who long for freedom. We pray for all who we hold in our hearts, who we remember now in silence. Gracious God, move among these prayers and move us in response. May courage open us to what is being born anew today in the world and in our hearts. May hope guide us to look for where love is dawning. May we be drawn closer to you and to one another through the love we celebrate this blessed Christmas Eve. Amen.
for the benediction, I invite you to think of those people that you often would sit next to in the pews at White Plains Presbyterian Church, uh, the people that you would be sitting next to if we were gathered in those pews this Christmas Eve. I invite you to bring their names and faces into your mind, and then to offer a simple blessing to them. I'll go ahead and model what I'm thinking of, and you may have other words of blessing you wish to add. Julia, may God's love be born anew in you today. Jackson, may God's love be born anew in you today. Soren, may God's love be born anew in you today. Ursula, may God's love be born anew to you today. And the list could go on and on. You could go pew by pew, think of all the names you can and offer that word of blessing on this Christmas Eve. And remember that in God's wide, lo wide love, we are brought near to one another on this Christmas Eve. Amen and amen. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hello everyone, Merry Christmas. Y Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas to all my friends of the White Plains Presbyterian Church. God bless. Hi, everybody from White Plains Presbyterian Church. This is Phyllis Worthington. Just wanting to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Wish we could all be together, but since we can't, this is my greeting to you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. May the peace of Christ be with you now and always. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And happy first birthday to Robin Cloud. Bye! Bye. <laughs> mm -hmm.